Now what will it be? Death or exile? What's up, everybody? All of you out there in the cinematic wastelands, we made it. We kicked 2020 to the curb. We finally made it to 2021. And from all of us at the Film Exiles, we hope you and yours had a fantastic holiday season. And here's hoping for a much better 2020 to 2021. We can move all, get all of this behind us. So, welcome to ENN, episode 51. We are your favorite podcast where you run down movies, entertainment, and much more. We're going to give you a hot take after hot take, because you can't cancel us. We've already been exiles. And this one is a special one for us on the podcast today because we're going to run down our top films of 2020 and give you our recommendations. Now, this isn't going to be just going down the list, reviewing every single one of them, telling you why these are cinematic masterpieces. No, these are going to be why we think these movies are so great and why we think you should check them out as soon as you can. And since we're probably still going to be locked down for a few more months, you should have the opportunity to do so. <laughs> Sure. I'm Chris. I'm happy to be hosting tonight, and I know it's a little bit of a different voice than you're used to, but don't worry. He's still here. He hasn't gone anywhere. One of my favorite exiles is on with us. Number one, the one, the only, Lupe. What's up, man? Hey, I am here, and I'm super excited for this uh, episode. I've been holding this top ten like, like, like a secret, you know, and it's time to, you know, share my secret with the world. Um, and my top ten... I know it's all subjective, but mine's going to be the best list, so that's just fair. <laughs> <laughs> I would expect nothing less. <laughs> Next up, joining us uh, is, of course, it's Mr. Positivity himself. It's Paul. What's going on, dude? Uh, not too much, guys. I can assure you my list will not be the best list. <laughs> <laughs> you it will, it will be a list, positive. though. It, <laughs> you've got enough positive positivity out of me the last few weeks uh, tonight, I'm, tonight i'm bringing it back to what you're used to <laughs> and we actually we had a full slate we got all four of us tonight i'm so happy to have him back it's brandon brandon how are you man i'm doing good i'm ready to get uh re-exiled by the exiles <laughs> Let's go. i'm sure i have a few that are on here that you guys are gonna well i normally have a few that are on my list that you guys think i'm well you think i'm crazy already so it doesn't really matter <laughs> yeah exactly so <laughs> So let's, what we're going to do, we're going to break this down, guys. We're going to go in reverse order. We'll do our 10 to 6. We'll do our 5 to 2. And then we're going to throw in a couple honorable mentions. Maybe there's a regret in there saying, I wish I watched this. Wish this movie would have been made this year. But because of the COVID pandemic, it got punted, whatever it may be. And we're going to end it all on our number one movie, at least to us, our number one movie of the year. And hopefully we can give you guys a recommendation. And we can tell you where you can catch these movies as well. So, Lupe, I want to kick this one off with you because... I love hearing your takes on things. So if right. you could give us a rundown, give us your 10 through six in no uncertain order necessarily, but, and tell us why, why are these and what was your thought process behind it? What did you really enjoy about your 10 through six? All right. So um, I'll start with saying that the year didn't go as planned. If you listen to our top 10 most anticipated films of last year, so many of those movies <laughs> were moved into 2021 or indefinitely. So um, it's been a year where we've had to, you know, claw and scrap for uh, movie entertainment. And um, but still, you know, we're able I was able to put together a list of 10 films. So without further ado, let me get into my top 10 favorite films and so number 10 is bad boys for life came out earlier in the Ooh. year i yeah i didn't expect it to be good but uh the chemistry between uh martin lawrence and will smith was really really good if you liked the previous movies they didn't lose a beat and then the directors who who brought this movie to the screens they added some more modern elements there's like a bad guy who has this crazy fighting style there's some car stunts it's kind of like fast and furious there's some younger more tech savvy you know uh characters that that you know are infused into the franchise so bad boys for life not the greatest film ever but i was pleasantly surprised by that one then midnight sky from netflix um i've seen a lot of varying you know sort of like reports on this one it's a very beautiful movie it's a sci-fi film. It's quite still. It's from George Clooney. I don't think it's as good as it thinks it is. I know that's a weird thing to say. Um, some of the things that you see in it have been done before. But it's a very, very, very 
you know, good movie, and mm-hmm. it's my number nine. Then my number eight is Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm yes, so happy that on there. Is, I am so thrilled. You put that this is like a kid's movie. This is not like some highbrow, artsy, fartsy kind of thing that I tend to love, but it was just so darn enjoyable. And, you know, the, the best thing about it is how they nailed the character of Sonic himself. We've never really gotten a cinematic representation or anything fully fleshed of this character, but they delivered the character in such a way that I'm like, this is what I imagined Sonic would be. This sort of like cool speedster, and he's just so affable, and, and you know, it's really good. And then Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey lately has been kind of hit or miss. Oh, he's a smashing hit in this one. This is like <laughs> throwback, like 90s classic top tier elite Jim Carrey and I can't wait to see what they're going to do in a, in sequels and uh, Jim Carrey's obviously going to come back and he's going to grow in his role I really recommend that if you haven't seen it you see it then now this is one that might be on nobody's list but is on mine it's the rhythm section mm. starring Blake Lively um, I really enjoyed this film it's uh, it's kind of a genre that's been done a lot you know a female assassin um, but this one there is a maturity to, maturity to it there's a stillness to it. it's not very flashy she doesn't turn into some sort of like rambo or ninjutsu warrior kind of assassin it's about a regular woman who due to tragic events becomes motivated and she really goes on on this powerful journey and it's, quite realistic in the way it approaches this this subject um i think it's it's one that if you haven't seen you should check out i'd recommend then my number six is the hunt and mm. wow this movie kind of came out of left field um it's like a, a political satire slash dark comedy and what i really enjoyed about it is that it tackles its political subject from, you know, both sides of the aisle. So it's not like it's li- written by liberals and it's just attacking, you know, conservatives, or it's written by conservatives and it's attacking liberals. Mm-hmm. It lumps everybody together and, you know, has some really interesting commentary on who we are as politically divided people fighting for you know, what it is that we want to fight in for survival, period. Um, so those are my t- uh, 10 through 6 to reiterate. Bad Boys for Life is number 10. Midnight Sky is number 9. Number 8, Sonic the Hedgehog. Number 7 is the Rhythm Section. And number 6 is The Hunt. Nice. And it was good to, that's a good you know, I guess you say bottom of the list. And I, I liked what you said about the hunts because I heard that from a couple of people too. Like they said, it didn't overly try to be like that crazy political, um, like one-sided crazy political. Mm-hmm. Like it bought both sides of the table. But when you first watch it or you first hear about it, you, you what like you might actually be leaning towards one way or the other. And you shouldn't. You should watch the movie for yourself and make the decision. So that's cool. Yeah. One of the things I like about what we do here is we we bring different sides to it. And Paul, I'm going to go with you next because you might bring your family and your daughter and what she enjoys to the mix as well. Because I know sometimes watching the movie isn't just about your own enjoyment. It's about whether she enjoys it too. So let's let's get you next. Start with 10 and go through six. Sounds good. Yeah, I think you took the words right out of my mouth there. It, uh, I mean, I, I, I rank my movies based on entertainment. What, what movie – did I enjoy the most? What movie do I think I'd rewatch the most? Um, and part of enjoying a movie is, is when you watch it and who you watch it with. And I think what we're going to see here in, in my bottom five here, uh, my 10 through six is that it really is influenced by, by who I watch these movies with. So number 10 for me was Enola Holmes. Uh, that's the Millie mm. Bobby Brown, Henry Cavill, Netflix uh, movie based on a series of children's novels. Uh, we enjoyed this as a family, watched it with my wife and daughter. We all enjoyed it. Um, it's not the greatest thing you're ever going to see, but it was enjoyable uh, family entertainment. My daughter enjoyed it enough that she's got the book. She's going to be reading the book. So for me, this was a win. Um, I enjoyed this one. I hope they make more of them. I think it was pretty good. Only thing I wasn't crazy about was turning and talking to the camera constantly, which is something I don't <laughs> particularly enjoy in films. But but I'd recommend this one. If you have a kid, especially if you have a daughter, um, 
I thought this was a fun movie. So Soul, or sorry, uh, Enola Holmes was my number 10. Um, gave away my number nine there. Soul would be my number nine. <laughs> uh, as, as you guys know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Disney Pixar shill. Um, and I enjoyed this one, but I didn't love it. And, and it's a well-made movie. This is a movie that I think is a better movie than, um, than I, than I actually enjoyed it, if that makes sense. So it probably deserves to be higher. I just, I was a little bored. I felt like some of it, uh, was reminiscent of things I've seen before, and while it was well made, and I really particularly liked the uh, uh, the music from uh, Trent Reznor and Atticus Atticus Ross uh, when they're in the um, whatever they call it, the in between world, um, it, it's a good movie. I'd recommend watching it, um, but not not enjoyable enough for me at least to put it higher than number nine. My number eight was another Pixar movie. That is Onward. And this was the last one I <laughs> saw. Sure? No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you see the theme here, right? These are all family <laughs> movies so far. Um, number eight was uh, Onward. It was the last movie I saw in theaters. Uh, so I enjoyed this one. I didn't love it. Again, normally uh, the Disney animation and the Pixar movies are, are real high on my list. And, uh, and these ones are coming a little lower than they normally would. But I still found this entertaining. This was Tom Holland and Chris Pratt. It was a fun movie. Um, it just felt like a bit of a miss for Pixar. Like I, I'd put this just a hair above um, uh, the dinosaur one. I'm skipping. It's uh, um, the last dinosaur, which I think was the last dinosaur. Good Whatever dinosaur. it was, the the good dinosaur. That's what that's I'm saying. Yeah, good dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, the good dinosaur. So this to me was not high end Pixar, but still good enough to make my top ten. In, in what really, I mean, it was a was an odd and weak year for movies. Uh, number seven for me, and this is going to surprise some people. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr.'s Doolittle. I, <laughs> I like this movie. My daughter Poor Paul, liked it. we've been tearing you apart about yeah, this. Yeah, we, we had a good time watching this movie. We both enjoyed it, and I didn't understand the hate. I really didn't. And so uh, you, you, you really liked the fart jokes and the poop jokes. <laughs> you know what? I, and I said this before, and I hope I'm, this isn't a spoiler. I, I don't think anyone listening to us is going to care if I spoil Doolittle for them. When he had to reach into the dragon's ass to get the armor out, <laughs> are you telling me that the same critics... Oh my God. These same critics that that shit on this movie, if if Thor had to reach into Hulk's ass to get his hammer back, are you telling me that wouldn't be peak cinema? It absolutely would be peak cinema. Like hundred percent in Rotten Tomatoes, guaranteed. Hundred percent Rotten Tomatoes, greatest thing ever. So lighthearted and fun. Hashtag fun. Uh, it worked in this movie. I enjoyed it. I liked it little. I don't care if it was messed with. My daughter and I watched this for what it was, and we thought this was a fun. Uh, fun, funny movie, and I, I liked it. So, and, and to be honest, I kind of want to watch it again. So, it's my number seven. I mean, how many times when you're describing the movie do you say when he had to reach into the dragon's ass? <laughs> yeah, do do little Ragnarok. You tell me if that happened in Thor Ragnarok, anyone would have complained. I, I, I can't I can't wait for Thor, uh, Thor: Love and War because it's going to happen, and Teddy Jenkins is going to be a huge fan oh, of it. Absolutely, right now. absolutely. Uh, now, my number six, very comparable on a you know on a cinematic scale to Doolittle, is Tenet. I um, wow, we're yeah. black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so this is the first one that is not is that a family a movie. Or is that an insult? I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, no. You know what? Um, I I kind of like. I saw Tenet once. Uh, I enjoyed it. But I didn't love it. I was a little bored. I had trouble buying into the faux physics. And to be honest, I spent more of this movie trying to figure out how they shot these scenes than I did really engaged in the story. Um, and it wasn't bad. I would say that it deserves a second watching, which I've not been able to give it yet. My ranking might go up on a second watching. But for now, based on my just, just my initial gut reaction enjoyment level, I'd put this one at number six. So that's where I'll leave my 10 through 6, just to summarize, 10, Enola Holmes, 9, Soul, 8, Onward, 7, Doolittle, and 6, Tenet. And I will pass it on to Brandon next. All right, so uh, I have trouble with with rating movies and giving them a scale. Um, just because some movies can't be compared. You can't compare... Uh, a movie like Sonic to a movie like Tenet. They're just not in the same ballpark. Um, so basically I just put my, my initial right off the top of my head score into letterbox and sorted it by score. And that's kind of where I'm at right here. Um, so uh, starting at number 10, I'm going to go with Midnight Sky on Netflix. 
Um, I like myself a nice, simple sci-fi movie. It's not trying to be super grandiose. But it was very well acted by George Clooney. Has some really good visual effects. There's uh, a great, uh, gorgeous shot on the moon of Jupiter that just mm. kind of takes your breath away, and you say, "I want to live there." Um, but ultimately, I just really enjoyed it for a nice small sci-fi movie. Um, number nine, again with Netflix, I'm going with uh, the Babysitter Killer Queen. Mm. Uh, I don't care what anybody says about McG. These babysitter movies are fantastic. I laughed my ass off the entire time. I love a good horror comedy that's ultra violent. Um, it it repeats a lot of the same jokes from the first, but it does it just well enough. Kind of like Home Alone Two, where it's the exact same movie, but somehow it still just worked. Uh, so I still really liked it. Um. Number eight is going to be Bill and Ted Face the Music. Oh. And oh, wow. the reason why I've got this here is because the trope, this is just kind of the movie we needed right now. It was just, oh, I, I see was, what you did there. It, <laughs> it's not trying to be a, a fantastic movie. It's trying to be Bill and Ted. And it succeeded in that. It was kind of dumb. But I, I just I kind of felt good at the end of it. And so, you know what? That's kind of the movie that I needed to watch at that moment. And I really dug that. And I'm glad that they put it on streaming for people to watch. Um, number seven is Invisible Man. Hmm. Uh, excellent switch up on that. Instead of making it a monster movie, making it a, a movie about domestic abuse uh, and just kind of flipping the tables on it. I love the sci-fi element to it. Mm -hmm. of the suit the the action was well directed it's not a huge action but the scares are there uh lee wanell is def definitely one of those directors that i really enjoy watching right now um and it's really cool seeing you know the guys from saw have kind of taken over the horror genre and i really i'm happy about that i'm such an ass i still haven't seen that movie yet it's, it's, still have yet to see it. it's quite good the performances all around are good the visual effects are minimal but very effective I've heard that. Um, yeah. And it's it's just a good solid uh horror movie. It's it's not trying to be anything big. It's not trying to be a a universal monster movie. Okay. It just was a great story and it grounds it in a way that works really well. That's cool. That's good. To um uh, and my final one uh for this section is going to be Underwater with uh mm. Kristen Stewart. That movie was awesome. Uh, I wish I would have seen that in the in the theaters. It is very, very claustrophobic, alien-like. You don't know what's going on out there, and it, it, it really just kind of reminded me of watching Alien or The Descent uh, and being uncomfortable, and then you get this big twist at the end, and I was like, okay, that was kind of fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, so I, I found myself thoroughly enjoying that way more than I thought I would. Um, and that's going to be the end of the first section of mine. So uh, that's going to go on to you, Christian. Nice. Give us the – what was the quick rundown? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, oh, just oh, the yeah. titles. So, yeah, uh, number 10, Midnight Sky. Mm -hmm. Nine, uh, Babysitter, Killer Queen. Eight, Bill and Ted Face the Music. Seven, Invisible Man. And six, Underwater. Awesome. Just to, just to interject and mm -hmm. not to interrupt. No, no. In a, in a twist of fate, Underwater – is one of my least favorite films of the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, sorry to go to go against you like Damn that. It, I, agree, okay. I, agree, I agreed with a lot of your picks. I did, but um, just to you know, let our our, our uh, audience know that you know we do tend to clash sometimes. We're not hey, just like a hive mind or an echo chamber. And I'll just talk <laughs> about that. So don't worry. I, you, you're going to tell us why we're wrong about a movie, Lupe? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. But no, no, that's not how we solve things here. I, 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 I'm, I'm kidding podcast, around. We're going to play, get play it on our Wonder Woman 84 from last <laughs> week. <laughs> our three-hour marathon Wonder Woman 84. <laughs> no. Paul, maybe you just don't understand how water works. I guess. No, no, this is how we're going to solve it. After this podcast, we're going to get in a cage match and fight to the death. <laughs> I think it's after 2020 with this Mad Max Fury Road world that we've come into with the apocalypse, I think it's it's it's, it's the right thing to do, you know. 
I, it's for what it's worth. I I did like Underwater. I didn't. It didn't make my top ten. But uh, the only thing I didn't like was that comedic guy. I thought he killed the movie. But other than that, I th- I thought it was pretty good. So I I tend to agree with Brandon a little bit on that one. And and Invisible Man didn't make my top ten, but it was it was a solid movie as well. So we also you know need this to sell on gives... movies. Just throwing that out there. No, this What's gives me Brandon? an idea for a script. Okay, how about a story in a dystopian future? In which we have a president, oh. his name is Mister Positivity, and the world has no humor or comedy in it. <laughs> hey, I like Doolittle. <laughs> <laughs> you did bring positivity today, Paul. There I knew you, you would. See, you there did you bring go. it. <laughs> and I got a buddy that swears by Underwater. Like it, it's very. He's been saying how he's just alien ass. Yeah, loves it. Loves yeah, it. Just I'm a minority exiled. There, there's there's days. elements of that movie that are pretty good. I got to check it out and make your own decision. Yeah. For Lupe's sake, I will watch Invisible Man first, but I will, <laughs> then I'll watch Underwater after. So, um, so at least I can be somewhat respectable. Um, so my my top my ten through six, you guys actually mentioned two of the movies, and like Brandon, I have a score, but outside of my top two, these rankings are pretty interchangeable. And much like Paul, I'm basically ranking these based on whether or not I enjoyed it. So it doesn't necessarily move, mean these movies should be Oscar winners, but I just enjoyed them. So my number 10, Lupe, was Sonic the Hedgehog. And mm. it was for a lot of the same reasons that you mentioned. And just the other thing I would say is because my wife and I howled like two freaking idiots when we were watching the movie. And it felt lively. It felt fun. We laughed. I didn't. I can't say it was necessarily a great movie, but it felt like I was playing the video game, yet Sonic came to life at the same time and it was just a fun movie to watch and that was it it made my top 10 and and with all the bullshit that went on behind the scenes with it i actually liked the redesign of sonic i thought it was pretty good his redesign so my number nine i don't know if you guys know about this movie but it's a documentary that i think should have gotten a little more play it's called collective uh it's a movie about the 2015 bucharest uh, uh fire that that ripped through a dance club it killed 27 people And then afterwards, 37 people wound up dying because of inadequate hospital facilities, infections, all kinds of crazy things that happened. And then there was a scandal where they tried to cover up the deaths. And I felt that this movie, it was recommended to me by somebody. It's somber. It's frightening. It's very political, especially with everything that's going on today um, with cover-ups and things like that. And I just found it to be appropriate (laughs) for 2020 to watch. Uh, So check it out. The movie's called Collective. It's on, I think, Netflix. Um... But I thought it was a very, very good movie. But again, that's this is not a fun movie in any way, shape, or form. It's going to depress you. It comes um, from that movie. Uh, what was the one with you and McGregor with the tsunami? Uh, oh, it's I like Tom Holland's first movie. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Oh. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. This is a documentary, so it's a little oh, different. Okay. But it, it's it's still. I know where you're going, but it's definitely. It's an eye opener. Number one, I think it's I think it's a topic that needs more people to learn about it. Number two, and it's just very, it's going to beat you up a little bit. When you get to my top two, one of my movies will beat the shit out of you. But this is definitely one that's going to beat you up. You're going to feel sad when the movie's over. But, you know, I just think it was important. My number eight is a Netflix movie that was supposed to come out on theaters and it actually got released in into uh, streaming instead. It's a Rod Lurie movie with uh, starring Scott e- Eastwood. It's called The Outpo- Outpost. And Caleb Landry Jones is in it. Orlando Bloom is in it. Jack Kessie's in it. It's a war movie. Uh, it's about the Battle of Kamdesh that happened during the uh, War of Afghanistan. And it's all centered on this one outpost all by itself in the middle of enemy territory where incursions are happening all the time. And it's just basically the United States military kind of forgot about them because it was very difficult to resupply this outpost. And these men are left on their own and an attack happens. It's claustrophobic. It's frightening. The war footage is incredible. And I actually have to give Scott Eastwood some credit because I don't find him to be a great actor. And I thought he was very good in this movie. I thought he was very believable. So check out The Outpost. That's on Netflix. My number seven, like Paul, is Enola Holmes. And you know what? You you broke that down pretty well, Paul. I don't really have much to add to that. I just found that with the exception of like her turning to the camera, breaking the fourth wall, stuff like that, I found it to be a highly entertaining movie that I was able to watch with my niece and nephew, and we just had a lot of fun with it. And I love the Sherlock Holmes mythos, and I thought Henry Cavill brought something to the table in that movie. It was enjoyable. I'd love to see a sequel, so that's number seven for me. Number six for me is Trial of the Chicago 7. Now, I know Brandon might be breaking this one down. I don't want to ruin anything, but I think this might be in you somewhere. There's so much about this movie, the energy the courtroom drama, 
Um, obviously, the historical aspect of it, and of course, it's Sorkin. I thought that the movie was done very, very well. I know it's probably one of the better movies on my list, and it should be moved up maybe to top five. Um, again, I'm just going by my enjoyment. I It was an extremely enjoyable movie. There are just a couple of movies on top of it that I enjoyed a little bit more, but it is a fantastic movie, and there's one of the, only a few guys that probably could have nailed it and pulled it off, and I think Sorkin's one of those guys. So going down 10 to 6, Sonic the Hedgehog, Collective at 9, The Outpost at 8, Enola Holmes at 7, and number 6 is my trial of the Chicago 7. So that wraps I mean, up. I really, I really like your list. Um, I, I haven't yet seen Trial of the Chicago Seven, and maybe mm-hmm. that will make my honorable mentions. And <laughs> you've recommended it. Brand has also recommended it, so I have mm-hmm. no choice. My hands are tied. I have to watch it. <laughs> I'm going to cry my like, eyes open yeah. with force. Dude, they're I'm talking about it. like you know really serious shit: peace, racism, war, justice. But he layers it with like that silliness that he's able to do, and it's so natural. Wow, um, Brand- Barrett Cohen is the the kind of the humor in it, but the, he was going for that, and he's fantastic mm-hmm. to lighten the mood. But that's that's kind of the way it was. As he was a sarcastic guy, but I can't wait. Frank Langella wait. is a cocksucker in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, holy and- shit! <laughs> All right. Uh, I gotta say a side note before we go on to the next yeah. one. Uh, based on our our, our previous uh, podcasts, it's amazing how many uh, streaming and Netflix movies are on this list. Yet that's yeah. not the future of how movies are supposed to be watched, right? Right. Mm. Right. Mm. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. It's almost like have we had this discussion on a couple of podcasts? Oh, anyway. Huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah for, for that theatrical experience. <laughs> <laughs> So next up, um, let's let's rip down our five to two in backwards order, I guess is the right way to say it, descending order. And I'll go back full circle, and Lupe, I'm going to go back to you. Give us your five to number two, and then we'll go to honorable mentions and everything after that. Okay, all right. So um, my number five is a movie that was on my uh, most anticipated films of 2020. I got to see it lived up to my hype kind of a little bit, and that's the Way Back, mm. directed by Gavin O'Connor, starring uh, Ben Affleck. This this movie was it was everything I thought it would be. Normally, you'd say and more, but that's where the cat comes in. <laughs> Not and more. I, I I feel like this movie was just a hair's breadth from being an all time great. It was mm-hmm. very very short, very succinct, and I. Felt like it didn't go as deep into the character's sorrow and dysfunction as it could have. It hinted at it, but then just pulled back a little bit. But it reinforces the fact that Ben Affleck is one of the greatest actors working today. It reinforces the fact that Gavin O'Connor is a brilliant, underrated filmmaker that just never gets his due credit. He's really fantastic in these sort of dramas. And um, I think it's a movie that is actually quite necessary in this age as we talk more about mental health, as we're more conversant and open to the discussion about destructive coping mechanisms and self-destructive habits and symptoms of of mental illness. And um, especially in, you know, like 2020 and this 2021, where we're going through all these turbulent times, socially, politi- politically, health-wise, economically. I feel like a, a film like this has a very powerful message. Yes. And uh, hopefully on the other side of this, we, you know, we, we, we make our way back to normalcy mm-hmm. and good health for all of us. So uh, The Way Back was my number five. My number four is The Invisible Man. Oh my God, what a movie. I, I just want to rave so much. At this movie is so good. It's definitely a genre film. Like this is, is um, it's a horror movie. Also has fantastical elements. It's sci- like sci-fi fantasy. And it just weaves all of these together in this very slick, attractive, polished fashion. Like, this is so good, so so good, and I'm really, I'm really um, impressed 
by universals you know like the movies they're making about you know these classic monsters and how they're modernizing them and refining what about them possible? yeah yeah and I, I can't wait to see if they're going to do a little bit of a crossover and how they blend i mean upgrade mm-hmm. was fantastic this is so um we'll, we'll we'll see what happens there's one coming out soon does anyone remember the one is it the the is it the wolf man that's the next on their uh, slate. The next one, the next one they're working on. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And um, no, this movie is just it's just it's just brilliant. It has a little bit of social commentary in there, but it's woven mm-hmm. very, very gracefully and tastefully in there. And um, Elizabeth Moss is the actress. If mm-hmm. if I'm yes, yep. Like yep. like I know I know that Paul <laughs> doesn't doesn't like her too much. I think she's one of the best actresses working today um, i think it's me I, and, and my, yeah, my problem yeah is, i don't okay i don't have any yeah either. i think she, she <laughs> I mean, is I'm, good I'm but I, I my problem with is her politics and everything that's why i have a yeah so i'll just keep my mouth ah, yeah that's okay. why all right. i have a we'll, tough time separating that i really all right we'll we'll, we'll we'll leave that out but but <laughs> I, I, I think she's well, i'm gonna I, watch I, it i'm gonna watch yeah. it I, I think she's an amazing actress so good then my number three is the five bloods mm. The, mm-hmm. uh, wow, Spike Lee like wow. really, Spike Lee really did his thing. It was released in the summer, which is far from uh, awards season. I'm just hoping that awards voters don't forget how good this movie is. It's also one of Chadwick Boseman's, you know, last roles. May his soul rest in peace. Remind just, me, when did that movie come out? It it came out in the summer months. I think. It was no, where did it, where did it come out? Oh, Netflix. Oh, oh, Netflix. Might have off on a streaming yeah. service. Yes. I think it's streaming. streaming. Yeah. Huh. Oh, streamer. And on a world cinematic. On streaming? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I smell it, sarcasm. Go ahead. It is, <laughs> is so cinematic, and the acting performances are just top notch. The cinematography, like everything about it, is just incredible. And it was released against the backdrop of our our summer of discontent with you know Black Lives Matter and us reassessing our societies and and systems and and the way that we relate to each other as communities of people and um, just a brilliant if you're looking for like a really dope but highbrow movie to watch you're the type of person who doesn't really like Oscar bait movies I present to you the Five Bloods. This is the one for you to watch. It really is. And then my number two movie of the year comes from my number two movie director um, of all time. And it's Tenet. Yeah. Tenet. I mean, not surprising to anyone who knows me. Um, not surprising to most people. I, I'm sure Tenet will make most people's top ten movies. And for all the reasons that 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 we all know, it's Christopher Nolan. He does these type of movies all the time. Um, it's just, it's a brilliant movie. And I would not be surprised, Paul, when you watch it again, if it rises on your list and if you appreciate it more. Because the first time I watched it, I liked it a lot. But the second time I watched it, mm-hmm. I was kind of blown away because I understood the innards more, the inner mechanisms. And I was more impressed with the fact that of all the movies that we've seen, Christopher Nolan is able to make this type of movie. Uh, there is something just impressive about the fact that the movie was made, period. Um, not just it having like this stupid, bloated budget, but it being an original movie, it being so complex and complicated and layered, and it being like a spy movie, but also a sci fi movie. Um, and I really love uh, John David Washington in this, I feel his performance carries the movie he's great in it i i really love the fact that he's in a star role and i can't wait to see what he has next i really hope that hollywood doesn't let him down and that he's given these type of roles in the future to continue to to build his star because i mean he's he's fantastic like when you talk of like a black but american like james bond type figure like he just pulls it off like so well and all the other performances are great we have a review of it on our channel so you know Mm -hmm. listen to that and that is my five through two and to reiterate and refresh your memory number five was the way back number four was the invisible man 
Number three was The Five Bloods. And number two was Tenet. Very nice. Not surprised at Tenet being up there. Not surprised at <laughs> yeah, that. I mean, you I am who I am. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong. And well, hey, we got a Disney show in here. You got a Marvel show over here. So yeah, we're doing all right. We're good. I, I have you guys are gonna shoot me. I still have yet to see Tenet. I still I wow. seriously I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Movie, so in I true can't cool, funny fashion. I watched it literally alone in an entire Cineplex. <laughs> I went to IMAX and Same. I was the only car in the parking lot when I got there and the only car when I left. That is uh, peak 2020 right there. Yeah, that was, last that was so eerie for 2020 for me. That was the, this is real. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did feel safer watching it that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you did the right thing. I mean, it's it's like you like we said, that's peak 2020. God, the good list, man. I like it. Paul, what about you? Give us your five to two. All right. Well, keeping with the uh, the streaming theme, my number five was Amazing. an Apple no. Apple TV Plus uh, movie, Greyhound. Uh, this nice. is the the movie about uh, an inexperienced U.S. Navy submarine commander, played by Tom Hanks, um, leading an anvo- an allied convoy that's being stalked by German subs. And I just thought this was uh, an immersive, uh, in- intense movie. Uh, Tom Hanks is likable. Um, it's it's brief. It's a short movie, which is it's not long. It's yeah. not long, which was surprising because usually you think these things are going to be three hour epics. It was not that. I think this one came in like shortly, like barely over an hour and a half. Um, and it, I would say that maybe the ending was a little abrupt and perhaps a little unsatisfying, which is maybe why it's not a little higher. But <laughs> overall, I, I really, really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was it was well made and um, I, I like the pacing. I like the as I, said, I just I just enjoyed it. So for me, this was number five, well made. And I think this one was intended to be in theaters, ended up going to Apple TV plus and it, it feels like a theatrical release to me. So I, I was really looking forward to seeing it theatrically and I don't have anything Apple, so I didn't watch it. Um, uh, but I really wanted to, uh, yeah, I'd, so. I'd recommend it. Yeah, I got it. It was definitely, it's not on my list, but it was a pleasant surprise, dude. So I absolutely agree with you. I finally got a chance to watch it. I thought it was good. It was, it was good. I, 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 I agree with, with everyone, which is maybe rare. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're based on that alone, all four of us said it was good. That's, that's endorsement that's enough, watch. right? That's a watch. Well, I, I, <laughs> I figured it would be good and I wanted to see it. So. Now it's it it could have made my top ten. It really could have made my top ten. It's it's not far from from the top ten. All right. Well, this one, Lupe, I'm almost certain uh, you're saving for for your top <laughs> uh, your top. My number four uh, also premiered simultaneously on streaming and theaters. Wonder Is Woman, it? 1984. Are oh, you? Oh my god! <laughs> I was wondering if somebody was going to pull it into the top yep, ten. I'm, <laughs> I'm pulling it into my top five, and, and <laughs> that is. That is not a villain. (laughs) It's a super villain now. (laughs) So, if you want to hear Lupe trash this movie for two and a half hours, I I refer you to episode fifty of Hit Ed. But I I just enjoyed this movie, and again, this goes back to who are you watching the movie with? And my daughter was excited about this movie. We sat down, we watched this thing. She had her Golden Eagle, uh, Wonder Woman, McFarland figure while we watched it, and she she was enamored with this movie, and I enjoyed it. Uh, through her and I, and I also found it entertaining for myself. I mean, this is a highly flawed movie as we discussed. Um, but I still found it entertaining two and a half hours. I wasn't checking my watch. I liked it. Um, it's not for everyone. And if you're looking for the Snyderverse and can't accept, um, that this is not tied in with that in any way. And is almost, a, a almost a, a refute of the Snyder. It's almost the anti Snyderverse. But but as I say, watching it with my daughter for what it was, knowing we're getting the Snyder cut, I was still able to enjoy this movie. So for me, this was my my number four based on my very abstract uh, enjoyment scale that I that I use to rank these things, and I would watch it again. So number four for me. Number three, another um, movie that came quickly to streaming after its theatrical release. Uh, this was The Crudes, A New Age, and for me. This was uh, the right movie at the right time. This was this was the movie I needed right now. Uh, I don't know why it just it it just worked for me. Uh, a little bit of like a couple times. So yeah, yeah, a little bit. Of, it surprised me. I mean, I, I like I used to really like old DreamWorks animation, and for me, this is the best DreamWorks movie I've seen since Peabody and Sherman. Um, and I know a lot of people like the How to Train Your Dragons movies, and I, and I like them too. And they've, there's been a couple of them that have come out since. But I really found that DreamWorks has gone down the drain uh, overall with with cheaper animation, more focused on music, starting with Home, and then continuing the downhill slide with things like um, 
uh, trolls and uh, and Boss Baby, which I just couldn't give a shit about. This to me was 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 pretty good and surprisingly good. I went in with low to moderate expectations. I enjoyed it. As I say, some good social commentary. Uh, basically, they they encounter a, a pretentious a family of of slightly more evolved pretentious douchey hipsters called the Bettermans. Um, the wife's name was Hope, which is just perfect because uh, I'm so sick of hope and optimism being shoved out her throats. That this was just priceless. Uh, just to, just. <laughs> You know, just that she was named Hope. It was so fitting with the virtue signaling and, and that kind of stuff. So I enjoyed that social commentary. I thought it was an enjoyable movie. They even had a a um, sort of a parody of the girl power uh, of a girl power scene in the end. It was <laughs> it was just the right movie with all the shit we've had shoved down our throats the last few years. This was the right movie for me at that time, and my my, my daughter enjoyed it too. Right, so yeah, I can respect so that, that was number that was number three for me. Number two, uh, we've talked about this one already. Number two for me, also the right movie at the right time. Uh, the movie I needed right now, The Hunt. <laughs> uh, I, a dark comedy. Um, as Lupe said, it's a balanced uh, social, political commentary. There was a lot I liked about this. Uh, in some ways, it reminded me of South Park in the way that it makes everyone look like an asshole. And, and I kind of like that. It, it wasn't <laughs> heavy-handed or one-sided. It showed... Um, it showed both perspectives, and uh, and it was it was darkly humorous. I found it highly uh, entertaining. Again, another movie where I wasn't looking at my watch, and and I appreciate that these days because more often than not, I find I am looking at my watch, waiting for these things to be over. This one was one I enjoyed uh, really from beginning to end. So that's where I'll leave it for my number two. So again, number five, Greyhound. Number four, Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four. Number three, The Cruise, A New Age, and number two, The Hunt. Awesome. Although it does sound like you're getting canceled by Lupe for Wonder Woman 84. It does kind of sound that way. Didn't, didn't we just get canceled for two and a half hours last week? <laughs> That's <laughs> bad. We got trashed. <laughs> you either die in exile or you live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Exactly. No, I think you just die in exile. I think <laughs> you just get canceled. There's no or. You just die in exile. There is nothing after exile. <laughs> Lupe, I want, I want to emphasize that Wonder Woman 94 is two spots above Tenet for me. Oh right my now. god! So wrap, wrap your mind around that. <laughs> my goodness! Emphasizing I, like, I, that it's the enjoyment of the film, right? Go ahead. Lupe. <laughs> I actually yeah. had it above Tenet until I rewatched Tenet, uh, and then I altered my score, and it did pass Wonder Woman eighty four. What uh, is going on? What <laughs> is happening? Am I being trolled? That's what's happening. Yeah, was not. Those people that ha- that you ran just have more anger and resentment, Lupe. That's all. We're, we're able to detach a little more than you can. <laughs> I was you know one of the people that had the issue with Tenet where I couldn't hear anything, so I left the, the theater enjoying what I saw, but feeling inf- just really fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> and I, I didn't like that feeling, but on a rewatch, and I had to rewind a few moments to, to catch what was really happening, I did, re- I, I did like it more, um, and it definitely passed. I, Wonder Woman 84 is definitely far more flawed but I, I could hear the movie. Um, so uh, that, that's, I, I understood what was happening. I just, it, it, what was happening was infinitely dumber, where I felt <laughs> dumb in Tenet. So that's where my rating was. But I, just so you know, Lupe, Tenet is above Wonder Woman 84. I, I, will, I will hold that close to my heart as the <laughs> last. The last hope for humanity. <laughs> and with with that, Brandon, why don't you do it, man? Give us your five to two. <laughs> uh, so number five, I'm going to go Soul. Cool. Uh, it's, it was just a good Pixar movie. I've said before, it's very much kind of like Inside Out for grownups. Inside Out is about the inside of a girl's brain and the, the change of emotions and and things like this. And this was much more uh, geared towards grownups who who don't know what their purpose is, who who think that they're doing the right things, and they're just not. And I really, I, I just liked that grown-up feel, that kids can enjoy it, but that it's really speaking to grown-ups. And actually, I, I, I think Toy Story 5, uh, 4 was very much that way too, mm-hmm. where it's still enjoyable to kids, but the those toys grew up with us. And now they're going, they're themes of just letting go and being able to move on and things like that. And I, I really like where Pixar went with it. Yeah. And I love Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross, and they actually did a great job with the the more classical jazz moments. And the music was great. I love jazz. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love blues and and things like that. So that part was great. And then it switched to more traditional uh, Reznor in when they're in the in between or whatever it is, where you kind of get that 
what Lupe calls noise, uh, <laughs> where it, it just kind of fit where they were in the movie. So the being able to see Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross grow into a, a more of an orchestra and less of a synthetic sound was really good. But all in all, I, I just like the Pixar movie that, that aimed at, at adults more than mm-hmm. kids. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, nice. Number four is Trial of the Chicago 7. Uh, another streaming movie and just all around uh, Eddie Redmayne redeemed himself after the, that horrible Jupiter ascending performance. <laughs> um, he reminded us why he's a fantastic actor. Uh Sasha Baron Cohen was great. Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is just—he's so under, under-mentioned, underutilized. I'm he's so happy perfect. you mentioned him because I didn't, and I should have. I'm so I glad you mentioned him. Go ahead. He's always so good. Um, but like I said, Frank Langella, or Langella is is great, but he's a fucking cocksucker. He's evil. <laughs> he's so evil in it. But I mean, again, it's all based around facts. And Aaron Sorkin is just always just great at, at putting that together um and it, it all just plays so well and they don't focus as much on the riots and and what actually happened as much as the trial and the the bias and what the what was trying to be achieved and it, it was just top notch and i actually watched it last night so i could know if it wanted to be on this list or not i did i almost didn't get it in in time mm-hmm. I'm glad you did uh, glad you did. number number three is the gentleman uh it's, I mean, what, what can you say about a movie that says the C word probably a hundred <laughs> and you love it every moment of it? Uh, it for actually for a completely different reason, it has more in common with Tenet that you think. Because mm-hmm. I left the movie theater and I was like, I didn't understand a fucking word these guys were saying, but I loved it all. Uh, <laughs> And I just like that level of British. I'm not on that level yet. I, I get it. <laughs> That's <But> too British. <laughs> it, 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 it's too British. <laughs> but I love Guy Ritchie's style. I love his quips. I love his editing. Um, why am I blanking on his name all of a sudden? The the main guy who was in King Arthur. Charlie he's Hunnam? Uh, Charlie Hunnam is fantastic with uh, with Guy Ritchie. He really is. And I was just pleasantly surprised. That was one I missed in theaters. Uh, I had to skip Lupe's review because I wanted to watch it, but I have refused to listen to reviews before I see a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I just blind bought it the day it came out on streaming and absolutely loved it. I love Guy Ritchie. Stop making Disney movies if, you, if you're listening to this. Uh, Guy, we know making, you're listening. Keep being an auteur. Keep giving us Guy Ritchie movies. We deserve them. Um, number two is The Way Back. Mm. Uh, it's just powerful and it's the other way from what Lupe said is it's not what I expected of the movie. I expected a sports movie and I normally don't like sports movies, Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's not a sports movie. It is an emotional movie. It's a, it's a movie about depression and about a man who struggles. And as somebody who's, who fights depression, it, it really meant a lot to me seeing what he went through and the fight and his, inability to cope with his emotions and his willingness to self-destruct and it, it just really really spoke to me and it's set against the backdrop of a sports movie but that's not the point of the movie it's not rah rah we're all gonna win in the end yeah. and yeah. It, it freeze frames at the end on somebody getting a slam dunk no man it's it's depressing it's heavy mm-hmm. and it's uncomfortable i just want to i just want to i just want to say something before you move on about it that um as you said, it not ending like on this sort of cliched happy note that mm-hmm. he overcomes also goes to point to the fact that it shows a realistic view of mental health and depression. Like it's an ongoing struggle. It's not yeah, something just... that you know there is like a happy ending and oh, it's completely over. And also, people who go through you know mental health crises and you know in their life tend to lose things. You know, you lose relationships, you lose whether it's opportunities or jobs or things like that. Like, usually there is a toll and you see the character, you know, pay the price. Right. And right. he's not able to get it back. Sometimes that just happens in life. Like, sometimes we lose some things and things are easier to lose than to get back. It's just, it's lost. There's nothing you can do to ever get it back. And it showed that. And while that's atypical of movies... The the realness of it 
I appreciate it. It was and very authentic. I think, I think and people I, should, should see. Go ahead. No, no, no I, I agreed with you. It's something that okay. people should see. It's uh, and, and like I said, as somebody who who has depression and has kind of suffered, not not nearly like that character has, um, but. I really found myself in his shoes, and when he was self-destructing, I saw my, some of myself in that, where you're unwilling to do what you need to, even though you know you should. You make excuses on why you, you can't or why you won't. Um, but every single time that he he would self-destruct, I'd feel myself like reaching for the screen, saying, no, just please don't. You're hurting yourself. And I just I felt so aligned with that character, and I, I I left the theater in tears, and actually recorded my exile review in my car, mm -hmm. just kind Remember of that. just raw. And I, I really felt it, and I I loved it. I don't know how quick I can watch it again because it's heavy. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like seven pounds. I mean, I can't watch that movie again, but God, is it heavy? Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, oh. so number five is Soul. Yeah, well, down. Mm -hmm. uh, number four was Trial of the Chicago 7. Uh, number three was uh, The Gentleman. Number two was uh, The Way Back. Nice. Nice. And we're, I, one of the things before I go my five to two is listening to you guys. It's so awesome to hear about how each of these movies like affects you in a different way. And it's like funny, like we'll have one guy will have it at two, another guy will have the same movie at ten, or vice versa, it'll be ten, it'll be three, or whatever. Um, and it just goes back to the way of these movies like speak to all of us. And they mean something to each one of us. They make us feel, they make us laugh, they make us cry, they make us feel silly, whatever it is, they make us think about life. Um, it's it's just good to hear. And we all all four of us bring a different perspective to it. And I like listening to it. So thank you all. To, well, to and the sometimes community. they transcend just being entertainment. Sometimes yes. cinema is more important yeah. than just passing two hours for me. Yeah. Sometimes telling a story that everything's going to be OK or that I'm not alone or or that the world is better than I think it is or, or whatever it is. But sometimes it's just more than just entertainment. And this is one of those movies that, that just really is. Yeah, and I, I will. I actually do have it in my my five to two, so I'll go into it in a second. I'm, I'm I feel spoiler. I won't spoiler. <laughs> um, number five, I'll start with that. As uh, I just saw it recently, and it just came out, um, is Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, and I think it's impossible to talk about this movie without well, the next two movies without talking about Chadwick Boseman um, and his untimely passing, um, and how horribly gaunt he looked in his, some of his final movies. Um, but he's an amazing singer, an amazing dancer. You guys know me. You know I'm a musician. You know how much I love music. This movie brings such a fantastic blend of 1920s blues, that smoky kind of sultry time frame. Um, Viola Davis is pure fucking fire in this movie. She brings it. I thought she was fantastic in it. The music is so good. It's so catchy. And I, I really like the fact, like, it had a very strong racism message. But I did never felt throughout the movie that it was it was heavy handed and it was trying to punch me in the face with it. The time that they lived in, like today, uh, is racist. Um, worse in many ways. We see many similarities, especially with what we're experiencing in the United States recently. Um, but I never felt that they tried to punch you in the face with it. And the movie just thumps from beginning to end. And I thought it was a fantastic movie. And I am, if I'm allowed to have a man crush on someone, Chadwick Boseman is definitely my man crush. And I was saddened, uh, so was my wife. We were really, really saddened by his death. Um, and this is just a fantastic movie. And I think the music in it is, is great as well. It's available on Netflix. Hey, look at that. Brandon, another streaming. Um, what? what? <laughs> so definitely check that one out. Number four, Lupe, I have the five bloods as my number four. Mm. The movie, mm. I think, and it shocked me, man. You and I talked about this. I did not expect to like this movie as much as I did. And I fell in love with it. It moves back and forth in time seamlessly um they didn't pull like the irishman effect on it uh, i the aspect ratios kind of shifted around there was so much about it has an awesome monologue there's so much about this movie that worked and it punched me in the gut numerous times i have to watch it a second time my wife has yet to see it and when i told her i watched it without her she almost killed me <laughs> so uh, so I have to watch this movie a second time. This will be rewatched very soon. I watched it later in the year. I think I saw it before Thanksgiving. It was around November. I listened to your review. I thought you were spot on with everything that you said. Thank you. It's one of my favorite reviews of the year. Like if, if I if I want to list like the reviews that I'm very proud of, like The Five Bloods, that's that's a good review. It's Go a fantastic movie. 
It's a fantastic right. movie. Um, and it's, uh, I don't know what else to say about it. I, it's just, and it, and it was one of those movies that, you know, like Brandon said, sometimes it's not just a movie. It touched me a little bit. And it was, you know, I thought about it after it was over and I need to go back and see it. I got to rewatch this movie. Uh, so I'm really happy that that's my number four. My number three is Paul. It's this one's for you. It's onward. So, and the only reason I, Onward is so high is I'm not saying Onward is better than The Five Bloods or Onward is better than Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. It just was so much fun. I felt that having these mystical characters exist in a 2020 world, um, playing video games, cooking food, doing all these silly, stupid things. The voice actors, I thought, really brought a lot to the table. They made me laugh. It just, the movie just made me feel a little bit. And sometimes in 2020, that's all I needed. This year sucked in so many ways. And I think sometimes I just needed to laugh and sometimes I needed to remember what it was like to be a kid again. And Onward did that for me. And it also did that for my wife. And the two of us really just felt kind of silly watching it, but we didn't care because we enjoyed it so much. And I thought the animation was very well done. Like Paul said, it's not Pixar's greatest. Um, there's definitely been better Pixar, um, but it just was so much, it just is good, you know? And, it, and it's, and it's sometimes that's really what you have to go with is the fact that you're mm -hmm. just entertained and you're having a lot of fun. Well, and the one thing I'd add to that, Christian, is that for, yes. if you if you've lost a parent, um, yes. know, especially as a child, it does hit close to home. Like I lost my dad when I was, I guess, fourteen. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you lost your mother, Christian, and yeah. um, it, it that that does that that you know as, as Pixar movies tend to do, it uh, it does tug at the heartstrings a little bit, and it has mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. a good message there as well. So it does. Mm -hmm. and it did that a few times, especially when you know he had those moments with his dad and everything. I know, spoil alert for anybody if you haven't seen it. It does have quite a few touching moments, and that stupid studio has a way of punching you <laughs> <laughs> they just have this way of hitting you in the feels and every now and then making you tear up they did it at the end of toy story three that oh god whatever anyway so yeah that that's good that i i would recommend the onward oh they my crushed your soul in toy story three man oh my god I, that was that was a rough few minutes <laughs> i know when they're in the uh the, at the end in the trash yeah they're about to be incinerated and you're like Holy shit, this is that dark. Did Zack <laughs> Snyder direct this? Holy cow. <laughs> well, Toy Story 4 didn't exactly leave you the happy ending either, right? No, it didn't. Oh, was, yeah. It left you with a great ending, but like I said, that it left you with a very adult ending. It didn't, mm -hmm. it yes. didn't treat you like a kid. It didn't sugarcoat it. it. It was speaking to the people that grew up with those characters. I saw that movie like in first grade, the first one. Mm -hmm. um, and I've grown up with the Toy Story characters my whole life, and I yeah. loved where they went with it. Yeah, I think they did a great job. And I think what you said is true, too, before I go to my, my uh, second. I think what you said is true. Like, for kids, like my nieces and nephews that are kind of being introduced to Toy Story, maybe they got introduced to it in Toy Story 3, they can still like it. But people like us that watched that movie when we were younger, we've grown up with Buzz Lightyear, and we've grown up with Woody and the rest of them. So their hopes, their dreams, their losses, all that kind of stuff, we feel that stuff. And it, it's... I think I think they did it really well, and they did it more mature than I would have expected them to. Yeah. You know? My number two, Brandon, exactly the same as yours, was The Way Back. Um, this movie is the last movie I saw in theaters. And this was a – I'll take a minute on this one. Um, I saw a lot of myself, I think, in, in Ben Affleck's character. I, I tried to commit suicide when I was younger. Um, depression has been a part of my life. It continues to be a part of my life. I wake up some mornings, even now at 40 years old, thinking about ways to kill myself. Um, it never disappears. It never goes away. It is a sickness that I'm going to have to deal with till the day I die. And this movie did not hold back from beginning to end. And it was painful. It was a rough ride. But the performances are so good. I, you saw some of Ben being Ben in this movie, too not just his character. I've liked a lot of what Brandon said. This was not just a sports movie. This was a human movie. It didn't end the way a sports movie is supposed to end. When he's shooting those three-pointers and he's just playing on the court by himself and you could feel that maybe he's starting to come back, but you don't necessarily know because of everything he's done in his life. He's always found a way to fall back into that hole. It just punishes you from beginning to end, but it is a truly human experience. And the sports is really secondary to that human experience. And it, it, I'm almost brought to tears talking about it, so I'll shut up. But it was just a powerful movie. And mm -hmm. in, in many ways, like I said, I think it just made me think about as well what I would leave behind if I were to go through with some of the dark thoughts that are in my head. I do have a lot to lose. I've abused myself in ways that he's abused himself. 
Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there, but it, it is definitely my number two movie. Um, it, it was so, and the score, oh my God, the score, the score mm-hmm. is so good. The score, especially in those closing moments, mm-hmm. brought mm-hmm. tears to my eyes. Uh, totally brought tears to my eyes. Go ahead. What yeah, you one say? Thing I, yeah. One thing I wanted to add was just that you could tell that movie was personal to Ben Affleck. As somebody who's who's big in like the Snyder Cut movement, and we've kind of seen what's happened with with Ben Affleck and what he went through, you could tell that movie was important to him, and he put everything he could into it, and he gave an Oscar worthy performance. I would agree. Uh, I I think he'll probably go under the radar, unfortunately, mm-hmm. um, but I I think he deserved it, and you could just tell with what he went through that it was important to him. And that's part of what makes it important to me is it wasn't just a role for him. Mm -hmm. It was a way for him to cope with what he went through with his alcoholism and his depression and trying to come back from that. And, you know, he appears to be better now, which is fantastic. And he deserves to be, you know, it just it spoke to me a lot because it wasn't just another movie, another role. It was something that that meant something to not only the audience, but the people that made it. I agree. No reason to hammer that home too much, but there are really are a few scenes with what he's doing with himself. When you see the depths that he's dropped, there's so much more there than just the character. There's real life there. Uh, there's real pain there. There's pain that I understand there. Um, so as I said, I'm getting a little choked up over it. But this was this was just a fantastic movie, and it, it deserves maybe deserves to be my number one. But there was another movie that I just enjoyed a touch more, so that's why it is. But The Way Back is my number two. So to t- count down my own number five, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, number four. The Five Bloods, number three, Onward, and number two, The Way Back. So those are my five to two. Um, so Lupe, I'm going to start with you on the next one. Before we go to our number ones, I wanted to know if you had, and you could, as many as you want, you know, if you had one or two, whatever. Did you have any honorable mentions? Were there any regrets? Was there a movie that you're like, yeah, you know what? I really wanted to see it this year. Should have jumped into it. So talk about it. What, what are some of the things that were outside your top ten? Um, I would say that... Um... Well, this is a top 10 list of, of movies or films, and I have this personal thing, mm-hmm. okay, and it's it's highly debated, and <laughs> the debate is usually between I and Brandon, to be specific, and don't worry, we'll add this to our list of, um, <laughs> of cage match <laughs> fights to have where we sell it, but I, I don't consider animated movies to be movies i i feel like it's a different medium you you can do different things it's not to me it's just not a level playing field for which to 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 compare them i know they're both moving pictures and obviously even films incorporate a lot of visual effects but to me it's just not the same thing Mm -hmm. so um i do want to take the time to highlight an animated film that i think was just absolutely like Woo, mind blowing, <laughs> super fantastic, extravagant, excellent, got me hyped. And just thinking about it just like makes me so excited again. Mortal Kombat Legends. Yes. Gorgeous. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. We talk of sometimes, you know, people try to explain, you know, movies or films or whatever content that just gets them amped up and excited. And it's just fun. That's what Mortal Kombat Legends is. It's so much fun. Um, obviously, there's a huge nostalgic uh, facet to it, which I completely admit. Seeing these characters that I grew up with since playing like Mortal Kombat 2 all the yes. way to Mortal Kombat 11 that, that's recently come out. I knew these characters. I've, I've grown with them. And to see them, um, you know, portrayed in such a, a, a respectful, loving, um, badass way was just so, so satisfying. And one thing I really like about Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, a very long title, is that <laughs> even though a lot of people see Mortal Kombat as quote-unquote cheesy or oh, it's just crazy fun, it took itself seriously, but the way it was able to interject some cheese and some fun and that sort of element that some people may associate with like, you know, the nineties film is through a single character, Johnny Cage, who that sort of tone comes naturally to who he is. So it wasn't like everything was cheesy and, you know, clownish. 
everything was really dangerous and badass and hard ass. But then one character was able to bring that element because it's a natural facet of who he is. I think that that was just so excellently done. And then there's some character arcs from beginning to end where like the journey the character goes through to the end, you're like, wow, that is so rewarding. So I can't rave enough about this. It's one of my favorite things of the entire year. And um, yeah, that's that's. I'll give that one to my honorable mention. Then <laughs> on the a dishonorable mention oh. is um, Wonder Woman 1984. <laughs> I, I'm going to add a dishonorable mention. I usually don't talk about films that I don't love because I, I can't help but laugh. I'm I love, sorry. <laughs> but this this was such an atrocity. I never expected this movie to be that bad. And I know that some people have it in their top 10. And they're like, Lupe, you couldn't just let it go. No, I couldn't. You're, you're reading my mind, Lupe. <laughs> I couldn't. So there, please, there please keep go. this under two and a half hours, my God. <laughs> there we go. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying anything. You guys, you guys, if you want to hear what I have to say about it, I have a review. I have a spoiler review. And um, if you want to hear more, follow me on Twitter. I'm constantly, constantly <laughs> Once in a while. I can't help myself. Once in a while. <laughs> it's like an addiction. I'm like, I'm going to stop after this. Okay, after this. After these couple of days. It's a drug, man. It's a drug. <laughs> uh, that is, uh, before I move to Paul, I, I just want to say, like, I agree with you with Scorpion's Revenge. Holy shit, was that thing enjoyable. Wow. That was just, what a lot of fun. And, and I thought the, you know, the little, they did the x-ray motions mm -hmm. when they were cracking yep. each other in the skull yep. and everything. It was just... It was so much fun from beginning to end, and like you said, it was made with love because they really loved these characters. They didn't chintz on it at all. It was so good. It was so good. So, Paul, what do you got? Do you have any honorable mentions? Is there a regret in there somewhere? Do you have a dishonorable mention? Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll fire through a few of these real quick because some of them have already been covered, but uh, oh. narrowly missing my top ten. Um, Invisible Man and Underwater I thought were, were worth watching, um, and – Bill and Ted's Face the Music, I think, moving back to the family side. I thought that was a good one. Narrowly missed my top ten. Uh, but those three have already been talked about. So I'll use um, – I'll say the one and only Ivan. Again, this is not like something you're going to sit down as, a, as an adult male and watch by yourself. <laughs> uh, but if you have kids, it was a nice It was a nice Disney movie, right? It was uh, It was a fun movie. It's based on the, uh, the Roald Dahl. I believe it's Roald Dahl. It's based on a book. Um, I'd have to double check that. But anyway, I mean, my daughter enjoyed the movie. She's read the books. There's sequels to that. So again, this was one that I enjoyed with my daughter and I thought was a fun movie. As for regrets, um, I guess the rhythm section. It was one I was really looking forward to and it just, it came and went without a whimper. And uh, I meant to watch it and I suggested it to my wife one night and she was lukewarm on it. And then I, until Lupe mentioned it tonight, I totally forgot about it. I just <laughs> forgot it existed. And so I, I do regret uh, not seeing that one. And I will actually put that on my short list to check out sooner rather than later. And the other one was The Way Back. And I had mixed feelings on that because like Brandon, I don't typically like sports movies. But at the same time, I, I wanted to support Ben Affleck. Um, I suspect this is a really good movie and one of those movies that when you do sit down and watch it, you're going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And like you'd stated, Christian, I do have some fears about watching this because I have a feeling that it might hit a little too close to home yeah. and that my wife might yeah. take away my tequila collection and <laughs> maybe maybe ban wine and beer at dinner and and I'll probably know she's right and I'm not sure I'm ready for that. So um, <laughs> At the end of this movie, in all honesty. <laughs> what, what's that, Brandon? I said you might give up drinking by the end of this movie. It's yeah, and I'm not sure I'm ready for that because I don't think I could make it through a week without, without a drink right now, so... Uh, I, I gotta, I gotta come to terms with, uh, come to terms with that before I put that one on. So, uh, those, that, that's, that's my short list right there of movies that uh, either I narrowly missed my top ten or that I, I probably should have seen and maybe will sooner rather than later. Good ones, bro. Good ones, Brandon. Hit us with you. Any uh, honorable mentions or any regrets? All right. So I've got, I've got two on here. One is a movie that got completely canceled, never got made, and it's just unfair that we as humanity do not get to experience. And that is David Fincher's World War Z 2. Mm. What the fuck? We deserve that movie. We almost had Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead and David Fincher's World War Z. Like, come on. Fuck 2020. <laughs> we, I, you know, I don't second guess Fincher. Ever since Social Network and I said, why is he making a Facebook movie and then watching and be like, wow, I'm totally fucking wrong. Make whatever you want. 
Yeah. Him, so, yeah. He's one of my favorite directors. Too. Like, he's, one of, he's one of my faves. Yeah. And I it, like, they said that, and I was like, dude, we are literally getting two of the most amazing zombie movies in 2020. One got completely pushed back, even though it never got technically announced, uh, with Army of the Dead. And then David Fincher's World War Z2 got completely bricked because Paramount doesn't know how to do anything but Star Trek TV shows now. Blame uh, 2020, bro. That's it. Yeah. Right. And, and then the other one is kind of uh, – is – isn't it weird because it is a TV show, but it's four episodes that make one movie, mm-hmm. and that's the final four episodes of Clone Wars, which makes the Dude. Siege Dude. of Mandalore, which is the best Star Wars since the original trilogy, hands down. It's fantastic. It's people that just get that world, get the characters. It's wonderful all the way through, and if you watch it as one movie, it it's fantastic. I need to interrupt for a hot second, and I apologize, but it's a shameless plug. Brandon and I did a um, we did a review, so you can find it out there. Uh, there we did a review together of it, and we we kind of like we even got like a little emotional talking about it together because we talked about how it like it understood the tragedy of Darth Vader at the end. And, oh my God, there was so much good with the cl- with the final arc of Clone Wars, and so I'm just throwing in a shameless plug there. But it was great to cut to talk about that arc with you. Um, we just had so much fun with it, but anyway, continue. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, that was it. Yeah, they just they nailed it. it. It was I could not imagine it being that good, and it made up for a pretty lackluster season all around. Uh, and it, it it just proved that those four episodes are all that mattered to the people that really wanted to make that season. Like we're putting everything in to end this series the way it mm-hmm. should, and yeah. nailed it. Hundred percent. I know it's four TV episodes. <laughs> It's a movie. It's it's meant to be seen that way, and you can just tell. No, we'll we'll forgive you on that one. Don't worry. It's fine. No, <laughs> I, I, yep. I, I uh I gotta jump here and make a correction here. I said Roald Dahl there because I was thinking of the witches, but uh, the author of uh, the one and only Ivan is Catherine Applegate. For anyone who oh. cares and was probably calling me an idiot, uh, <laughs> Catherine Applegate wrote the one and only Ivan, and the other sequel I was referring to is the one and only Bob that uh, my daughter also liked, and that one's not a movie uh, yet, but who knows? Maybe we'll see. No, you are not an idiot. You're not idiots at all. Um, but no, thank you for the correction. That's awesome. Um, thank you, guys. I have uh, same thing. I just have two quick regrets and then two honorable mentions. Uh, we already spoke about Invisible Man, so that's that's on me. And I'm going to watch it. So uh, that's absolutely going to be one that I have to watch. I also was told, and I don't know if you guys watched it, but I've been told by how many people I should have seen Emma. And I never did. And I've been told by friends and everything like you need to watch it like all right so it's just one of those things that i regretted not watching through the year and with all the bullshit and the time we spent at home in 2020 streaming some of the nonsense that i did stream i didn't watch it and i didn't watch invisible man so those are definitely two regrets two honorable mentions i i want to throw out there by the way the first one look i know it's not that great the old guard it's not fantastic um it it has weaknesses but yeah it was i liked it and what I really like, I'm all into the immortals. I'm into that kind of stuff. I'm in, you know, I thought it was a hip, kind of a fresh take on immortals slash superheroes. I really like the way they weaved in ancient history throughout it. Obviously, you have Charlize Theron. She's awesome. It had a good cast. They had a lot of chemistry together. The action sequences I thought were very good. Um, it, it suffered a little bit from that Netflixy. You know, that digital look to it, the special effects sometimes were a little wonky, but I'm not really going to blame them on that. I like the old guard and it's in my honorable mentions. I would definitely, if you haven't watched it, I'd say try it, especially if you're into like that immortal stuff. And, and the, way they, uh, the way they were killing that girl over and over dude, was absolutely <laughs> brutal. Like it made me uncomfortable thinking how she would wake up, heal and then die Stop. like every two minutes for all of eternity. It's like Mess. that is awful. Awful. Like just th- that is. Up. Let's count that on the list of ways I don't want to go out and high at the Just yeah, mess. I thought it, but it was, and it was brutal too. Brutally violent, worse than I thought it would be. It was just it didn't hold back. I thought it was good. And in a year when I didn't feel like we had some of the big budget, kind of like just dumb action movies, I liked Extraction. I, I I thought I want to give that an honorable mention. I thought that movie was entertaining from beginning to end. I thought Hemsworth was very good in it. I thought the action was slick. It was realistic looking. 
There were at times I had questions about how many bullets were left in people's guns and why people were shot 15 times and were still able to keep going. But that being said, I felt that it was very gritty and I thought it was exciting from beginning to end. And it had a dumb story, but a story that held my interest and I found it to be very entertaining. And we just didn't have a ton of those action movies this year. And it was good to get one of those action movies. So I would recommend Extraction if you have it. So, so that's mine. Lupe, I'm going to start with you. We need some sort of drum roll, so right? We'll go. So let's go with our number one movies of 2020. And Lupe, I'm going to kick it off with you. So number one is is the Gentleman. Nice. Yes, <laughs> it's the Gentleman. <laughs> um, wow, I absolutely adore this movie. It's interesting because in terms of how I would rate the movies that probably rate Tenet and the gentleman about the same in terms of technicality. Tenet is like, has an infinitely bigger budget. It has eh, bigger movie stars. Maybe you can say, um, I mean, it's Christopher Nolan, it's complex. It's this, it's that, but the gentleman is just so God darn enjoyable and so yeah. pleasant. <laughs> and, I found it to be enjoyable too. I yeah. Thought it was enjoyable. And and on the low, the script is also very complex. It does this thing where in the in the movie itself, in the script, there is a script, you know, that they talk about that someone is trying to sell, right. you know, and there's blackmail, and then there is, you know, the witty banter of of <laughs> um Guy Ritchie, and then there are these, you know, really strange characters. Who have you know very different uh, motivations, and then they're talking to each other, and then weird things happen, and then you have someone on this side, someone on another side, and then someone coming from the back door to all try to get this. There's this way that Guy Ritchie's able to weave these ensemble casts mm -hmm. into this like tapestry of art. It's it's like in my opinion. This is as highbrow, as prestige, as artistic as anything Quentin Tarantino typically does. Mm. Um, but Guy Ritchie just doesn't get the same publicity. I mean, um, his stuff is probably not as prestige in terms of the way Tarantino relays. He makes his stuff a little bit more accessible, a little bit more grounded, a little bit more earthy. Um, but it's as technically impressive i think that that's the most impressive thing about this the script brilliant characters great acting it's humorous but in a very quirky unique uh mature intelligent way and i just i cannot recommend the movie enough it's my favorite film of 2020 it reminds me how much i love guy ritchie as a director um it's a shame that it went straight to theaters. This is a movie that would have rocked on a good streaming service. Um, if it was given a highbrow, like prestige treatment and rolled out like an event film on a streaming service, I think that this would have done a lot better than. And I think it revealed to you recently, mind blowingly, that it is becoming a series and Guy Ritchie is writing and directing the series. I am, wow. I'm so excited to wow. I'm so excited to see that. I'm really and excited. he said that he originally intended it to be a series, and Universal said, "Hey, how about not?" <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "Well, I could make it a movie," and they're like, "Yeah, that's what we're talking yeah. about." Yeah, and then it gets big, and they're like, "You want to make a series?" And he's like, "Well, yeah, that's what I wanted originally." That's uh, that's exactly what, and I, I feel like, unfortunately, I feel like Guy Ritchie should be someone who makes like events streaming content mm. um because people it. yeah people just don't seem to go see stuff in theaters and it's always so good like king arthur like king the arthur. man's from uncle like even the sherlock holmes movies haven't been like the most amazing huge blockbusters ever um there's something about his films in which they, they're more you know medium smaller films but they're so well done as i said he's like quentin tarantino but without the awards and prestige um, reputation. And that's what the gentleman far is. Far more polished than Tar Tarantino, uh, but doesn't get the, the recognition that Tarantino does. Tarantino oh. writes very, very well, mm -hmm. uh, but Guy Ritchie's movies are much more slick. Uh, yeah, yeah much more, more people polished. I know like talk about how they enjoyed them. 
You know, like there, I, I've heard people just talk about the enjoyment factor, which that's key. Mm-hmm. You know, that's key mm-hmm. saying that, you know, using that slick term and everything, it's you're absolutely right. And people turn around and say, oh, yeah, you know what? That movie made me laugh. It made me whatever that that's important, too. Um, and I think that he brings that to the table. And yeah. he's absolutely an auteur. He, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. When you watch a Guy Ritchie movie, you, you know you're watching a Guy Ritchie movie. You can you? Tell. Yeah. We know, like, yeah. Paul, that's not really his style, but Paul can tell when he's watching a Guy Ritchie movie. Absolutely. And he can tell that he doesn't like it, but <laughs> it's. I don't it's, strongly dislike it and actually like King Arthur, but <laughs> I, I don't get. I don't. I don't. Uh, his style just doesn't necessarily work for you. That's fine. It's just That's cool. yeah. It just it just doesn't uh, it just doesn't jump out at me and, and grab me like it does you guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I get it. But it's yeah, it's just like, like you say you can you can tell when you see it unless it's yeah. Aladdin, in which case you cannot. <laughs> well, then you can't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not at all. We don't we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I I liked Aladdin, but it does not come across as a Guy Ritchie movie. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, think there's yeah. about five seconds where you can tell it's Guy Ritchie, and that's about it. <laughs> that's, yeah, Lupe, that's uh, uh, yeah, so that's oh. that's my number one movie of 2020. It was on my most anticipated list, and it was high up on the list, as a matter of fact. Um, and it really lived up to it, and a lot more. I've seen it several times, and I'm going to watch it several times more. Nice, awesome. Here. And I and I know from talking with you what a fan you are of him too. So that's not surprising, but it's awesome at the same time. So that's great. Um, Paul, let's go with you. Drum roll. What is your number one? Give it to us. All right, my number one. Now I hope I didn't break any rules here because it uh, it just came to my attention that this movie actually snuck into a film festival in 2019, but it didn't okay. get released. It didn't get widespread release until 2020. Um, and believe it or not, this actually was released at the Toronto International Film Festival, which I did not realize. But uh, so I could have actually gone to see it. But uh, my number one, and again, for you guys to say I don't like comedy, it is a dark action comedy. It is <laughs> Guns Akimbo. By, oh, that's wow. Great. That's great. By, by Jason Lee Howden, uh, starring Daniel Radcliffe and Samara Weaving. And I... This was another one of those just what I needed movies. It was just the right mm-hmm. movie for me at the time that I watched it, and uh, I I love this. I was I was thoroughly engaged in this movie from beginning to end. Um, it's funny. It's dark. I mean, there's a little bit of cringe, but uh, it's ultra violent, um, <laughs> and and it's just funny to watch Daniel Radcliffe um, in such a change from his Harry Potter role, and uh, and just having such a horrible shitty day. I mean, this poor bastard, <laughs> uh, and. You know, and, and for those that don't know, I'm not going to spoil it, but but basically he's a, he's a, he's an ordinary computer programmer, a bit of an online troll on the side, and he makes a mistake of trolling this um, underground um, deathmatch fight club that streams its videos online, and he ends up getting drugged and um, waking up with his uh, hands around, his pants around his ankles and guns bolted into his hands, and he's forced to fight in this deathmatch. And uh, it, 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 it's one eighty four. It, it just yeah, it just works for me this movie I, I i loved it this as i say this was this was the, the movie i needed at the time i saw it and uh i i recommend i mean watch the trailer if if you like the trailer you're gonna like this movie if you don't like the trailer you're probably not gonna like this movie because it's it's what you'd think it would be but uh i, I really as i say i i really enjoyed it a little over the top in spots but um but but highly highly entertaining so that for me um Based on my, as I say, a totally abstract entertainment scale, this was the <laughs> the movie that was just for me and my most entertaining movie of 2020. That you have raved about that movie for a while now, and it's one of those that like I just wasn't into. But just because you've talked about it so much over the last couple of months, I want to watch it. So yeah, and this, just, yeah check I want to watch I mean, it. I hope. I hope I, this might be one of those movies where you need to go in with lower expectations. <laughs> But, so I hope I haven't hyped it up too much. But it, but if there's anything about this to you that looks like it might be good, give it a shot because I thought that's this great. was a great movie. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Brand- <laughs> that's great. Brandon, give us your number one, man. Drum roll. All right. So I actually am going to break a rule here, and it might piss people off that I even put something like this on the list. Mm-hmm. And I understand, but I'm going to stand by it. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two. Ah. There- there is not a single entertainment anything that impacted me emotionally, borderline physically, as The Last of Us Part Two. It is as close as you can get to an amazing masterpiece of a movie told in a video game form that raised my anxiety through the roof. I played it four times. I cried at the end every single time. 
I got completely obsessed, but put it up there with any movie, any TV show that is the, the best piece of entertainment I played this entire year and maybe within the last few years. And I don't care that it's not a movie. It is my number one because it was absolutely stunning from beginning to end. And it, it just really, really impacted me in a way that I only normally expect from a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm putting it on there. And Lupe, I don't care if you just... <laughs> I know you liked the game, but <laughs> if you don't like animated movies being in the film list, then I know you don't want a video game in there. <laughs> yeah, so so we're no longer doing our cage match. I'm just going to bomb you. I'm just going to throw a bomb. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was, I'm not fighting fair. Forget it. <laughs> I was can, can I go online and watch the cutscenes, so, guys? <laughs> would that would that tell the story without playing the game? You need to experience. Yeah, um, you got to experience the game, man. You got to. Uh, it deals with so many layers of emotion and 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 just it's such a cinematic it's, game. It is. It is. I, it is. It is highly cinematic. It is. Uh, and yes. like I said, I know. I, that's why I, I claimed ahead of time this was a curveball. Nobody was going to see it coming because it doesn't necessarily belong to be on a film list. But I think it broke into a realm that is far beyond being a video game. Um, and it, g- it gave me emotions that I felt in The Way Back. It gave me horrific emotions that I felt in uh, The Old Guard with how somebody you know, would wake up and die every five minutes. It was horrifying. Like underwater, it hit almost everything in my top ten, except uh, like it wasn't what I needed at the right time. Like like mm-hmm. Bill and Ted, I felt awful at the end of that game in the best way possible. There, nothing good happens in this game, but you get to the end and you're like, that was the most amazing experience I've had. And it didn't come from a movie or a TV show. It it came from a video game, and I cannot stress it enough that that broke down the barriers i mean other games have have done that as well but it, it's a, a playable movie in every way shape and form and it looked the part too it was brutal from beginning to end and again another shameless plug lupe brandon and i did a review out there it's it's on the uh, exiles network the exile sorry the film exiles channel it's on the youtube channel you can listen to it we really went deep into the game lupe asked us a lot of questions about cinematography music everything the story um, and we really went hard on it, and we all three of us loved the game from beginning to end. I think mm-hmm. Lupe, you did too, right? You loved it as well. Um, it. Just a fantastic experience, and um, yeah, I, I would say you can watch the cutscenes probably somewhere, Paul. But you're going to lack something in the experience because being a part of that and making the choices that you have to make in that game hurts. It hurts, and it's just when you get to the end of it, you are beaten up as Lu- as uh, Brandon just mentioned, but. <laughs> It's just in a good way <laughs> at the same time, and it, it's an experience. Never it's felt something so you more aligned with a character throughout an entire process mm-hmm. than I did in that game. And part of that comes from you have to play one the first game, mm-hmm. but you have to ex- experience and play the second to yeah. really under to to get in the shoes of of the character that you have to play for the next ten hours, mm-hmm. and you uh, the, you have to be able to buy in. And I don't think watching it yeah. does that justice. And- yeah. And I think the most important thing is that there is something about two characters and you have to you have to walk a mile in their shoes. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That that's something that's very important to the dramatic sort of like tension and there's this there's this I don't want to spoil anything, but basically what I said, you have to walk a mile in the shoes of two characters who are opposed to each other. To really feel what the 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 moral of the lesson of the story is, yeah, and I, it took massive risks that only a studio like Naughty Dog could take. Mm-hmm. That is in a position in its career that they could make a game that alienated as many people. It's very brave. It's very bold to say well, I'm going to make a game that some people may not like, mm-hmm. and I that's the sign of a of a true visionary, in my opinion is to not take the easy route and not make things that you know everybody's going to like. That's the Disney route. Make something that's going to challenge people that might piss people off and mm-hmm. let people talk about it. And I, that has far more impact to me than anything that's just trying to make you feel good and move on. 
Yeah, it's definitely is an impactful experience. And, uh, you know, we've talked about how many times just, just, you know, the closest thing you'll get to a cinematic experience within a game. And, uh, yeah, couldn't agree. Hey, it's a curveball, but it's a good it, curveball. It is. <laughs> I like it. I'll be um, exile. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my number one uh, is not a curveball. But I'm cheating a little bit with my number one as well, because I don't know if you necessarily can call it a film, but it is to me because they've condensed it and they made it into a film. So for me, my number one is Hamilton. And I thought this movie, because it is a recording of the Broadway show, but they had to condense the way they did it. They had to change the cinematography and they had to change the angles. But it doesn't matter because Lin-Manuel Miranda's music is incredible. The performances, especially, and I cannot remember the actor's name, and I'm really upset about it, but the guy that plays George Washington is out of control good. But this is anchored by the hip-hop thumping soundtrack, which just keeps you going from beginning to end. I love Broadway. I love musicals. My parents, I was blessed. They took me to a couple of Broadway musicals when I was a kid, and I was hooked. And I did not get a chance to see this on Broadway. I did not get a chance to see it live. So I think it lost something in the translation when I was watching it on my TV and streaming it. But it didn't matter because I was glued to every second of it. And I loved all of the music. Every performance was good. Retelling the life of Alexander Hamilton that we knew already, uh, if you study history, but in catchy ways, in ways that made you laugh, in made ways that made you feel a little sad. Some of the moments were told a little bit different from a different perspective in history. And of course, it was making a different type of commentary with the people of color that were casted throughout the entire performance and the entire show. And they couldn't have been better. Um, I loved it from beginning to end. So I, while I think that there were things that were, there were movies that were better throughout the year, Hamilton left an impact on me and left its mark on me. And I want to see more of what Lin-Manuel has to do uh, in the future. And I know that he's going to be working with Disney and a Colombian animated uh, movie that my wife is extremely excited about. And she's got me all turned on to it. And I want to, I've wanted to go back and listen to more of his music, to look at more of his works to hear more of his songwriting and I've learned to love the guy a little bit more. And I think that was what was so important to me about Hamilton. It left an impact and it just combined so many things that I love with music and history. And I know it had its own little political thing and people argued about it left to, you know, back and forth a little bit, but uh, it was phenomenal. And if you guys haven't watched it and you're into musicals, I'd give it a high, I'd give it a recommendation. Try it out. Right. Uh, so All everybody, right. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, that was, it was just uh, a great. I haven't seen it, but uh, yeah, uh, good, good Check choice on. I hate it. musicals. <laughs> I hate musicals. I hate musicals. I'm never going to watch it. <laughs> I know you said you I'm haven't. I know musicals, you told. except for Sweeney Todd. That's the one that really just <laughs> love Sweeney Todd. I, I can't help it. Uh, I and I don't even like Johnny Depp. Uh, anymore, he he really bugs me, but somehow Sweeney Todd is just awesome. Sweeney Todd does work, and it's got some really great music. So <laughs> brutally so, violent. It is brutally violent. We have meat pies. Anyway, uh, we are. So that's it, guys. So to run down, by the way, our top, our number ones, uh, Lupe. It was the gentleman. For Paul, it was Guns Akimbo. We got a throw a curveball thrown at us by Brandon by giving us the Last of Us Part Two, but I could not agree with him more on how awesome that experience was. And for myself, my number one was Hamilton. So we hope everybody out there had a good time listening to us. We'd like to hear what your number ones are. We'd like to hear what's in your top ten. This was episode fifty-one. It was our top of twenty twenty. Keep an eye out. We're gonna be doing a most anticipated for twenty twenty one. We're gonna be recording that soon. We're all pretty psyched about what we see coming out there, and we want to share that with you guys. Everyone. Why don't you tell the listeners where they can chat with you about the movies that they've heard about and where they can give you some of their suggestions. Lupe, kick us off. Where can people find you online? All right. Thank you guys for listening to this episode. I have been yours truly, Lupe. You can find me on Twitter at Live Love Lupe. You can also find me on Vero at Live Love Lupe. Nice. Paul, where can everybody talk with you online? Yeah, as always, you can reach out to me on Twitter at underscore Paul underscore P. And uh, thanks, as always, for listening. And uh, give us your feedback. Subscribe on uh, our audio channels and on YouTube. And uh, let us know what you think. Nice. Brandon, how about you? Where can people talk with you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the underscore meatball underscore 84. Nice. You can find me, everybody. I'm on both Twitter and Instagram at the same place. It's at chart6363. I'm the therapeutic guitarist. You can find the Film Exiles podcast at 
the film Exiles on Twitter. Give us a follow. Talk with us about this. Guys, what's a good emoji, Lupe, for people if they listen to us all the way to the end here? Anybody have a good emoji? I, I, I have a good one. Go for it. Let's go with an alien. I like it. Yeah. I like it. So if you because listened been, all the way to the end. 2020 was weird, so <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> why not? The truth wow. is out there. Good things 2021 started out a whole lot better so far. Oh, yeah, yeah. 2021 is just a sequel. It's a sequel, guys. <laughs> don't, don't trip. <laughs> don't trip. So, so leave us the alien. Hey, thank you so much for listening to us, guys. From the Exiles family to all of you, we truly hope you and your families have a much better 2021 than 2020. Thank all of you, and uh, God bless everybody. Remember, stay safe out there, stay healthy, and above all else, Stay exiled.